Now, here's a hot item. Every time you hear that this or that year is the warmest in a thousand years or 10,000 or 11 bazillion, please remember that we have no thermometer records for most of the world before about 1880. So just about everything prior to that is based on proxy indicators like tree ring widths. Which is fine. Science does the best that it can with what it has in a spirit of humility and frankness. Except, in this case, the wizards of tree ring reconstruction haven't told the public that they just throw out all the data they don't like. When they collect tree ring samples in the woods and get them back to the lab, they do what they euphemistically call pre-screening, and they only keep those they deem reliable, even if it means discarding most of what they collected. Which would be fine if reliable meant they had confidence in the way they were collected, but it doesn't. It means they confirm the approved narrative of an upward 20th century trend. It's like a drug trial that only counts data from people who got better. But 20 years ago, Stephen McIntyre of hockey stick busting fame heard about some Alaskan tree ring data being hidden by a scientist named Gordon Jacoby, and he tried unsuccessfully to get his hands on it. Jacoby died in 2015, but McIntyre only just stumbled on an online archive where he'd quietly posted the secret record instead of prudently deleting it. And it blows the IPCC version of climate history to smithereens. This chart shows the data in a form called a ring width index, RWI, which according to orthodox theory is a measure of temperature. And as you can see, it shows a rapid warming after about 1000 AD that peaks in the early 1100s, and then this, yeah, medieval warm period yields to a late 14th century cold era, which cycles in and out of cold periods before concluding in the 1970s on a cold note, with the 20th century being nothing out of the ordinary. It's clearly an inconvenient data series, and McIntyre's post recounts Jacoby's rebuffs of his efforts to get the data, including the appallingly frank quote, If we get a good climatic story from a chronology, we write a paper using it. That is our funded mission. It does not make sense to expend efforts on marginal or poor data, and it is a waste of funding agency and taxpayer dollars. The rejected data are set aside and not archived. Which would be fine, apart from the fact that he was fibbing about the data not being archived, if by poor data he meant rings from a tree that had been struck by lightning or gnawed by porcupines so that its growth record didn't reflect general climatic conditions. But he didn't. He meant any tree ring series that didn't show 20th century warming. And the problem here is obvious to anyone with statistical training who's not in the climate cult. Suppose tree rings don't actually measure temperature at all, they just randomly wander up and down as a set of coin tosses would do. Well, if you sample enough of either tree rings or coin tosses, a few of the series will have a 20th century part that slopes up and random noise beforehand. And if you keep those ones and toss the rest as unreliable, voila, you get a temperature record that says what you told it to say and only that which might enhance your career prospects, but it proves nothing scientific. By picking a different subset, you could just as easily prove that it's colder now than in the past, precisely as Jacoby's secret Alaskan record does. Unless, of course, tree rings are no good as a proxy period, in which case Michael Mann's hockey stick is out the arena window. (laughs) 